Hey guys, what is up? Zero here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Salvation Remake. In the last episode, we had uh, the girls, after, you know, helping Yuri out with her problems and everything, uh, you know, the, 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 the club tried to do the same with Natsuki, you know, Yuri tried confronting her so they can all fix her problems. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> uh, Yuri was being very rude <laughs> at certain parts. And yeah, no, that didn't work out. But um, uh, but it did seem like MCU was able to kind of fix it a little bit. We were able to kind of talk her, talk to her a little bit and kind of make her feel a little better. So uh, there's that. Also, it seems most people are now, you know, on better terms with Monica. So that's good. You know, Mon and Monica's also starting to, it feels like Monica, I know I keep saying this every time, but it really is true. She's slowly warming up to everyone, I think, still also. Now, however, what she's going to say here is probably going to be weird. But, you know, she's still going through it. <laughs> she's going through the cycles. It's fine. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. For the tenth time, I attempt to reopen the console. I shakily place my hands in the air and begin to move my fingers. Come on! The crowd in pain, but I keep pushing. Fingers suddenly start to jumble up and glitch out. It feels like a bunch of rocks are being thrown at them all at once. Ah! Blood is streaming from my fingers. I feel the floor around me, yet I can't see a thing. Nothing but darkness as far as I can see. Did I go blind? Did I... No. I can see my own hands and my own body. Yet there isn't a single light source anywhere. Did I... break everything? I grab my head in pain. I slowly raise my arms and put them into position once more. I move my fingers and... Huh? Wait, error. Monica... Monica, Monica reset initiated. She's being reset? Monitor kernel access? Maybe this will work. Okay. She's still here, and then the game should still be intact. So, just... What the heck happened earlier? Where am I? What in the world's a monitor kernel access? Okay, so yeah, so as we as um we as we basically figured out earlier, this game is using its own version of the side stories canon, but they are still using some parts of it. Like for example, Monica being referred to as the monitor kernel access. It's like Monica's like I think Monica's what she actually is, and then you know her code name more so is Monica. Reset progress 1%. 1%? 1 percent. One percent. One percent of what? I start to panic. I practically try various commands, hoping something will give me an answer. What the hell? Without thinking, I type in delete Monica .cur and nearly execute the command. Progress updates. I slowly hide the console from view and look down at my bloodied fingers going to happen to me now? What have I done? I look around again. I find something that I'm familiar with. Come on. Just give me something. Anything. I'll do anything. Be the club president you want me to be. I'll do that if it means I can get out of here. I'll do that if it means I can fix this. Of course, nobody can hear me. I don't even know if you can hear me either. I'm just trapped here. Forever. It really does feel like that. Oh. Monica? You home? I tried to call you before I came, but you didn't answer. Well, you're probably asleep now, but... Hopefully you're awake. I guess... My mouth feels incredibly dry and my fingers still ache. I look down and still my injuries still remain. So that wasn't a dream. In fact, I'm still standing in the exact spot I was earlier. 
It's felt like days. As I look down and check my phone, it's only been a few hours. Text message is also there reading, Prezi, can I come over? As well as a few mixed talk as well as a few missed calls. Prezi. <laughs> Coming, Natsuki. Stumble a bit as I try to regain my bearings. It's already too late when I realized I haven't covered up any of my injuries. I open the door for the pink-haired girl and allow her to come in. I'm only able to greet her with a somewhat dejected smile. i able to hide my emotions quite well, but this time... Hey, thanks for letting me in. I was afraid you were asleep already. Is everything okay? Did you really walk all this way alone at this time of night? I had nowhere else to go. I give her a confused look. Nowhere else to go? She doesn't mean... Dad kicked me out. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry I didn't answer earlier, either. I was, uh... Oh, what happened to your fingers? You look pretty banged up. Oh, that. Yeah, I accidentally slammed them in a door. Worst pain in the world. <laughs> no kidding. How did you manage to get all of them slammed like that? I can feel frustration as she starts to pester me with more questions. Let's not worry about me right now, okay? What about you? I had a stupid argument with my dad, okay? Nothing serious. I find that difficult to believe. No father would kick their own daughter out of her house like that. <laughs> yeah, you would think that would be the case for all parents. Yet, I'm here, aren't I? Look, I appreciate you taking me in, but I don't really want to talk about this. I still haven't forgotten what you guys did to me earlier today. So why come here? You'd have to be stupid to think I'd go over to Yuri or Sayori's places. I don't know. You just seem like the middleman in this whole thing, I guess. I see. Well, I apologize if I don't really have any comfortable places for you to sleep. I've only got one bed. I was about to point her towards the couch behind us, but something is stopping me from even offering. If, uh, if you're cool with it, we can share the bed. Really? You do that even after all I just said? Yeah, I don't really know either. Your anger's warranted. Hmm. Fine. Because you don't mind. Not at all. You're my guest, after all. It's the least I can do. Hmm. Right. She removes her backpack from her back and places it on the floor. As I watch her open it up and take out her pajamas, I start thinking back to my experience. How lonely it all felt. How maddening the silence was. It was as if I had died, my soul was trapped in limbo, waiting for someone to rescue it. Hey, is it alright if I use your bathroom to change? Of course. Feel free to make yourself at home. Hurries off towards my bathroom and shuts the door. I sigh and look back down at her backpack. Normally I wouldn't be this nosy, but I think my circumstances have allowed me to toss my morals out the window. Open it up and see that she's got a few manga inside, as well as a small plushie with a funny looking face. Hmm, cute. Other than that, is there anything that seems out of the ordinary? Close her bag, I close her bag, I close her backpack, I, uh, I close her bag back up and walk to my kitchen to clean up my fingers. Move them around easily despite some pain. They aren't broken. I think this is the first time the game has genuinely hurt me physically, though. It only frightens me even more. I turn the faucet knob and allow lukewarm water to run in between my fingers. It burns slightly, but it's nothing I can't handle. I gently rub the blood off and take extra care to not go at it too hard. As I wash my hands, I think about the things I said before. How I'd do anything to try and fix what I've done. Maybe if I play the role this world wanted me to play, things go back to normal. Do I dare try and open up the console again? Without much more thought, I slowly lift my hands up and perform the same motion I'm performing as long as I can remember. It appears. The same message is still plastered in front of me, serving as a reminder that something is going to happen to me if I don't take action fast. The goals are no longer what they used to be now. Or maybe they are. Just in a completely different context. I have to save myself from this world. I 
grab a towel and dry my hands off. Back in the living room, and Nasi comes out of the bathroom at the exact same time. Her pajamas are exactly what I expect them to be. Cute. Oh my god! That's the pajamas that Monica drew! <laughs> oh, I don't... Oh, uh, bleh. I'm not MC. Boo. I don't dare call them. Call that out. I assume you're ready for bed? I'm not exactly dressed for a fancy party, am I? <laughs> I guess you're right. Let me show you to my room. We can set up there. I love Natsuki to enter my room. Nice room. Looks comfy. <laughs> it's nothing special, but it's home, I guess. Walks around for a short bit before sitting on my bed. What's up? I don't deserve this. I deserve this kindness you're showing me. I'm so brood to you, and I'm still expecting you to let me stay here. I think I did deserve all that shit you guys gave me earlier today. All right. I'm afraid to face reality. I can't talk about how I feel with others. I, I can't. This is my chance. This is how I can fix everything. If I make this better, my whole life will be better as a result. Natsuki, you're my friend. My friends deserve all the kindness I can provide. I know recently I've been making a few questionable decisions that might not make you trust me. But I'm trying to make up for that. I'm more than happy to take you in tonight. Don't worry about that. She wipes her tears away. Sorry you had to see that. I should, uh... I should also thank you for helping me and Yuri work things out. It's... Well, it's kind of admirable. Eh? What is? How mature you can actually be. Oh. Can we just get to bed now? I'm tired. Sure, let me get the lights. I shut off the lights and scooch in next to Natsuki, already facing away from me and covered by my blanket. The room is silent, only my air conditioning breaking that silence with a soft hum. Hey, Monica? The voice is now a soft, gentle whisper. What is it? Uh, just so it's out there, I think you're a great leader. I can't imagine anybody else leading the club other than you. Uh, thanks, Natsuki. That means a lot. Close my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. How much time has passed now, but I can already feel Natsuki's light breathing right beside me. Strange feeling, having someone sleep next to you. My mind is at ease, and I feel extremely relaxed. It's a welcome change, considering I can't even remember the last time I had a good night's rest. I can't help but smile. Yeah, we have been wrong about them. Maybe this world is punishing me for everything I've wanted to do and tried to do. But I can fix this. I just have to be patient. I've made it this far, anyway. I can do this. Move over on my back and let my body completely relax. I think Natsuki's breathing will lull me to sleep. Okay, now I can finally talk about a lot of the stuff that's been going on. Very cute, though. Very cute scene. Bro, why is Sayori even here? <laughs> why is Sayori even here, bro? Ah, <laughs> oh, God, I gotta click out of this. Oh, no, it doesn't keep going. Okay. Ah, no! Okay, I thought it was gonna keep going, but no, no, it just stopped. Okay. Alright. Uh, <laughs> why is Sayori even here? I'm too busy caring about the Monica subplot, bro. <laughs> Rude! It's not rude if it's true. <laughs> I was say, like, I care more about the Monica subplot than the Sayori stuff. I'm being real with you, chat. But, um... Sayori salvation, my ass! <laughs> I'm about to say, bro, what you mean? <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I... So, well, I guess one thing I will say is... I don't know how I feel about Natsuki's random outburst. <laughs> That, that, like, is the only thing I thought. That is something I want to talk about. That felt very just out of nowhere. <laughs> I heard randomly just, like, yelling, I don't deserve this! Like, I'm just like, oh, no, I felt a little weird. <laughs> like, I feel like there should have been a little bit more of a build-up to it, maybe. Like, maybe she's, like, being weird. Or, like, you know, like, she's, like, fidgeting or something. 
And then maybe like she like says it under her breath or something first. And then Monica's like, what did you say? And then she yells it. Like, I think maybe that's like a more like, you know, because then her yelling, it would make a little more sense because she's had to repeat herself and she doesn't want to keep saying it. But like the fact she just randomly shouts this is a little odd. <laughs> was a little odd. That's more weirder than randomly being kicked out. What do you mean randomly being kicked out? She has an abusive father. Well, I thought it was obvious why she got kicked out. She probably just talked back to him and then he fucking kicked her out the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, what do you mean randomly kicked out? I'm like, did we forget Natsuki's story? Did we forget like Natsuki's story here? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, but yeah, no, this is a nice scene. Um, I'm pretty sure if I had to guess what the, so I think Monica's correct. I think Monica's half correct, though, what I think is going on here. So she mentions the fact that this world, maybe this world is punishing me for everything I've wanted to do and tried to do. So I do think she's right in that. And the fact that every time she's caused, like every time she like always took pain or something and all the pain she like felt. I'm definitely thinking that it was the world punishing her for constantly trying to do her old and her old ways. However, I think the reset isn't something that's actually happening to her and is more so something she's actually doing. I don't know. I could definitely be totally wrong about this, but I'm thinking because she's like saying like, okay, well, I'm going to try to be, you know, a better person so that this reset doesn't happen. But it's like, I think she's the one doing it, you know, like... It's more of a, if nothing's actually happening to her, it's more so she's doing it to herself. <laughs> like, it's more of a metaphorical reset, I'm thinking. It could still definitely be a reset, but it, I'm thinking it could potentially be more of a metaphorical thing where maybe she actually is just, that's showing how slowly she's starting to slowly accept everyone and go back to fulfilling her role as their club president instead of trying to, you know, get out the game. Could be wrong, but that's just something I'm thinking about. I mean, I could be wrong, and it very well could quite literally be a exact reset, and by that, that they're just straight up ripping her awareness away, but I did love to see. <laughs> so someone in the outside is twisting the world. Yeah, see, that is something that's not really explained, and I'm hoping does get explained, because it is, does feel a little odd, because I'm like, who... Who is doing this? Why is the game doing this? Is there any reason that the game is doing this? Like, I do, I am definitely wondering if that is going to get explained, and I hope it kind of does. Because, yeah, I feel like there has to be some sort of explanation as to why the game is trying to enforce her to be, like, a good, like, you know, enforce her to be, to do, to, to, uh, to, I guess, to play nice, I guess. <laughs> Like, I guess you can make the argument the game did that in the original, but it didn't never really did that. It more so just broke under Monica's control, less try to fight her. It only tried to fight her because she was trying to break the game. So, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. I do hope that they, we do get an answer to this. Yeah. Alarm goes off. Slam my head on the alarm clock and rise up from bed. Last night was pretty rough. But I think I'm finally getting a hold of my grade situation. Be having an after-school tutoring session with some teachers to try and make up some assignments and improve some grades. This unfortunately means I won't be able to make it to the club meeting today. But it's for my own good. Plus, Sayori's probably starting to worry about me. That's the last thing I need. And probably the last thing she needs as well. Or am I as in yawn before I, get, before I get up to get dressed? I walk outside. I notice I, I notice Sayori's already up waiting for me. Good morning, Zero. Morning, Sayori. Hey, guess what? What? I have an after-school tutoring session today. About time I got some help with this stuff. Oh, that's great. Would you like for me to join you? Huh? She'll miss the club meeting. I'd rather be with you. Well, who am I to deny that? Their interlocks are armed with mine as we make our commute. It feels off, though. Yeah. Ditching the club meeting? What kind of vice president is she? <laughs> well, that's a bad vice president. How dare she? I feel like there's a reason she doesn't want to go to the club today. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we're both on the same page here. Because <laughs> I was like, it's a little weird that she doesn't want to go to the club. I feel like she would have been fine going there. I have a feeling it's got something to do with what happened yesterday. Because it doesn't matter. Nobody really wants to tell me anyways. As I arrive at school, 
Two familiar people walking together catch our eye. Hey, it's Natsuki and Monica. Usually don't see those two walking with each other. Let's go say hi. Uh, all right. As we make our way over to the unlikely pair, I notice Natsuki doesn't look too happy. Nor does Monica. Well, they could just be tired. But well, Sayori's right. These girls usually don't walk together. They live on completely opposite sides of town as well. The outer loop has never felt so frustrating before. Morning, guys. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> I'm guessing you're referring to the route we decided to take this morning. Mm-hmm. I usually don't see you walking this way. Walking this way. Natsuki either. Natsuki and I both decided to take a different route to school. Yeah, gotta change it up sometimes. You know how it is. She still has bags under her eyes. I thought she would have been able to get good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Natsuki and Monica share glances with each other for a short moment. Well, we all better get going. We don't want to be late for class now, do we? <gasps> You're right. Come on, Zero. Let's get going. Uh, wait! Before I can protest any further, Sir grabs my arm and starts pulling me towards the school entrance. No! Oh! <laughs> Despite Sayori rushing to her class with the fear of being late, we arrive about 10 minutes early before class would start. Brilliant. Though, so, you aren't the slightest bit curious as to why they were walking together? Not really. What is there to be curious about? We've all been friends for a while. Even you were surprised, though. <laughs> Admittedly, it was a bit weird to see them both coming into school from the same area. But I quickly figured out why. Huh? What? They had a sleepover last night. You do know what this mean what that means, don't you? Uh they had the sleepover. What else could it They had a sleepover and didn't invite us! <laughs> it is way too early for you to be yelling like that. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be invited anyway. It seemed like something they wanted us to know. Going off how they acted this morning, anyway. Well, uh, you're right. That is a bit strange. What secrets could our president be hiding from us? Let's grab our tinfoil hats. Okay, Sayori. Nothing like that. I'm sure we're making something out of nothing. It's possible it just has something to do with what happened yesterday. Which, of course, you know more about than I do. Uh, yeah. You're right. I'll only talk about it with you if she decides to open up. Otherwise, my lips are totally sealed. That's good, then. You're a good friend for doing that. And you're a good friend, too. For not trying to get it out of me, of course. Grace suddenly gets close to me and lowers her voice to a whisper. Because in all honesty, if you kept trying, I probably would have broken and told you. Wait, what? Oop, that's the bell for class. You better start getting to class, too. But... Playfully pushing me away before heading into her own class. Hmm. I mean, not that it's a bad thing or anything, but seems weirdly upbeat despite what happened yesterday. I don't know. Feels forced somehow. Hard to tell with her sometimes. I readjust my bag and head to class. She's right. She is half right. I mean, they did technically have a sleepover. The only question remains is like, is Natsuki going to be staying there for like a, for like a few days or was that just a one night thing? Is she going to go back to her, to her dad now or, you know, it definitely does make you wonder. Also, Natsuki being kicked out is also quite a weird, I think, quite a interesting development actually now that I think about it. I know I mentioned earlier where someone pointed out that they were like Natsuki's dad kept randomly kicking her out and I was like, what? He's abusive. What do you expect? But then I was like... Actually, now that I think about it, that's even, like, weird for an abusive parent. Because even an abusive parent, they would more so try to keep you under their roof. So that, you know, they can continue to lord, lord over you and everything. Like, <laughs> so that's where I'm like, it is a little weird that he would just kick her out. Because at that point, Natsuki doesn't have to go back. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, it is definitely a little odd, huh? <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's not like abusive parents come in a type, so. <laughs> There's still an hour left for lunch, but I've really got to use the bathroom. So the door closed behind me and make my way down the hall. Make my way down the hallway. What's Sayori's up to right now? She's doing alright in her classes. 
really thought about how she acts when I'm not around, honestly. Is it more of the same, or does she take her mask off when she's not around her friends? I don't know if that's something I'll ever find out. Whoa! In the split second I shut my eyes, I could immediately tell who this was. There's only one person I keep bumping into. Is it Yuri again? We haven't seen Yuri in a while, so it's probably Yuri. Yeah, it is Yuri. <laughs> Sorry, you. No, it's not! Oh! <laughs> Yuki? <laughs> Natsuki, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Ugh, I don't even want to ask. Just watch where you're going, idiot. Okay, okay. Jeez. Don't know the word. She walks down the hallway towards what I assume is her class. The wait! What is it? She really turns around, almost as if she expected me to call out to her. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, all right then. Would you like to join Sayori and me for lunch? We won't be making it to the club today, so... Really? Why not? I've got tutoring to go to, and Sayori insisted that she'd intend. Ah, I see. Been out the floor for a while. She's probably not going to take that invite, then. <laughs> I'm not sure if anything specific happened between her and Sayori, but I can't be blamed for asking, since I really don't know. Think she'd be okay with that? Huh? Why wouldn't she be? Is it because of... Actually... Can I ask that? I'll join you guys. I'll meet you both there. Okay, never mind. She did accept. Wow. So I was surprised. I was say, the fact you just told her you weren't going to be there probably kind of put a sour taste in her mouth, but uh, and there you go. <laughs> okay, great. See you then. Turns around heads back down the hallway once again. As for me, I continue my trek towards the bathroom to finally relieve myself. Alright, so... So far, my guess is that Yuri and Natsuki had a fight. Maybe said a few things that both of them regret. Sayori got involved somehow, and maybe Natsuki says some things she regrets. Or maybe Sayori said some things, the latter of which doesn't seem likely. You know, I'm these really good guess, MC. I think that while we were while we weren't there, they all used words. Mm -hmm, you know, I'm thinking that's puts pretty good pretty good theory, honestly. Write that one down. Not sure about Monica, though. That's a whole different mystery, it seems. Regardless, looks like some trouble happened in the club, and it's something I can't know about. Great! <laughs> okay, MC, I'll crack that case. But that type of sleuthing you were doing earlier, you got this. <laughs> I and I arrive at the cafeteria and head to our usual table. Nasuki's sitting at a table full of girls I've only seen a few times. She's a little quiet for how rowdy the table is, but I should probably stop staring before I'm seen as the weird one. Ah, I'm pretty hungry. I can't wait to dig in, but I thought Natsuki was gonna sit with us. <laughs> You're always hungry. Hey, that's like calling me fat, meanie. Absolutely is not. It is too. Natsuki shows up shortly after we sat down, just as she promised. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, hey Natsuki, joining us for lunch? Yeah, I guess so. As he keeps shooting glances towards that other table from earlier. They're laughing amongst themselves and seemingly having a good time. Hmm. Anyway, what'd you bring for lunch today, Sayori? Well, remember how I said my dad would come over yesterday? Mm-hmm. Well, he packed me this super cool lunch based on an American cuisine. Cuisine, huh? Sounds fancy. Sayori pulls her lunchbox from her school bag and stares us both down. Both hands on the table and begins to drum roll. Are you both ready for this? Just show us already! Here it is! Ta da! It's. the cheeseburger. I know, right? Isn't it exciting? Your confused look at Natsuki for a short moment. Let's just let her have this. At the same time, it's, it's just a burger. What makes it so special from the burgers you'd get here? I'm glad you asked. A cooking connoisseur such as yourself would find this very interesting. What makes this burger so different is that it was cooked in bacon grease, allowing the flavor of the bacon to seep into the meat. That sounds super gross, Sayori. No offense to your dad. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's definitely different from the burgers you'd find here, that's for sure. No, really! I thought the same thing too, but then I tried it, and... Mmm, pure bliss. Here, Natsuki, you can have half. What? No, that's okay, dude. You don't have to. It's your lunch. 
It's okay. I insist. It's honestly too big for me to finish anyway. Terry takes out a plastic knife and carefully, but somehow also clumsily, cuts the burger in half. Looking at it again, it does seem a bit different. Loaded with bacon and melted cheese. You should not find burgers like that around here. Sorry, finishes cutting and hands half the burger to Natsuki. Here you go. Thanks. Natsuki takes the burger and quickly begins to eat it. It just now occurred to me that Natsuki doesn't even have her lunch with her. Well, how is it? Good? Natsuki only nods as she continues eating. Well, where's my half? Hey, you already have your lunch. What did you bring anyway? Uh, nothing special. Just some white rice, some fried fish. Must be tough having to prepare and cook food for yourself. Eh, not really. It's a bit time consuming, but owning an air fryer kind of makes things way easier. Oh my god, he owns an air fryer? <laughs> wow. The MC definitely does not give the doesn't own he definitely does not give the owning an air fryer vibe, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Is Sayori giving up her food? Are the heavens angry? No, Sayori gives up her food to her friends if they're hungry. <laughs> it's just she also steals food from her friends if she's hungry. <laughs> Are air fryers really that versatile? Well, clearly you don't own one. Okay, well, I don't like him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't rely on an air fryer to make most of my food. Touche. Work harder, not smarter. Uh, I mean, uh, oh my god, he messed it up again. God damn it, MC. Take away his air fryer. He doesn't even deserve it. <laughs> Smarter, not harder. Ha, <laughs> you lose now. I don't make the rules. That's just how it is. What? Lose what? Sorry, help me out here. She only shrugs. I grumble to myself as I begin to eat my food in defeat. It is nice to see Natsuki smile, though. Not often you get to see that. Oh, guys, let me tell you a story. So, me and my dad usually watch a movie together when he comes home from overseas, right? And he showed me this movie that I've never seen before about a love story on a sinking ship. Oh, yeah, that one's pretty good. Yeah, I've seen that one too. Eh? I was left out this whole time? Well, anyway, I cried so much I went through an entire tissue box. You guys cried a lot too, right? I didn't. Nope, not me either. Don't make me feel left out, meanies! I get it from my dad, okay? He cried with me and he's seen the movie so many times! Hey, it's okay to cry. There's nothing wrong with expressing your emotions like that. I like when a movie makes me cry. Even though I can't really recall the last time it's happened. Yeah, heck, I've got manga that makes me cry. You're not alone. Just... Don't let that info leave this table or I'll beat you both up. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Terry suddenly scoots up closer to Natsuki and whispers loudly. I not trust Zero, however. He's an open book. What? Hey, you little... Reach over and attempt to grab Sayori's tickler spots to no avail. Then places a finger on my nose and giggles mischievously. Jeez. I'm telling you, you never really know when Sayori's going to strike. Hey, it doesn't matter to me, one way or another. You two are fun to be around. By the way, Natsuki, how have you been feeling? Huh? Me? Duh, is there anyone else named Natsuki around here? Alright, point taken. I've been doing okay, though. Just trying to take things day by day. That's great to hear. We did you have a conversation amongst ourselves? Talking about everything but what happened yesterday. You know what? I think that's for the best. And I hope that whatever it is, we'll work it out soon. Lunch is now wrapping up, and both Sayori and Natsuki get up from their seats at the same time. Well, back to the fray. The fray? Sayori, nobody says stuff like that anymore. Yeah, well, I do, so leave me alone, meanie. Raise my hands up and surrender. Sayori walks over and opens her arms up wide, inviting Natsuki for a hug. Actually, it looks more like Sayori's about to give her one regardless. Uh, but, 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 boundary, Sayori, remember? Uh, <laughs> sorry. May I have a hug, please? Hmm. Yeah, what the heck. But you only get one. <laughs> I can work with that. What do you mean, boundaries? She never learned boundaries. <laughs> we never had the actual side stories happen. 
<laughs> and Sayori never learned about boundaries. <laughs> There's no way for her to know. <laughs> Mary and Atsuki share a small, share a small but tight embrace. Well, that's nice. Girls are whatever happened yesterday. Good to know it wasn't enough to stop them from doing stuff like this. No. Don't even think about it. One dream of it. I'm disease free and I'd like to keep it that way. Also gives me a friendly punch on my arm. Wait, are you saying that I gave her something, Zero? What? No. Where'd you even get that idea? We all laugh together as we clean up after ourselves and leave the cafeteria. Yes. <laughs> now it's Monica time. Let out a sigh as I hover my injured fingers over the piano keys. All right, middle C as it echoes in the room. Sighs as I slump in the piano bench and stare at my hands. Too banged up to play anything complex, which only sands me further. Take the time on the clock on the wall. Still a few more times till the club meeting starts. Zero. The character I thought was nothing more than a vessel for you. Is acting completely on his own. I never foresaw any of that. I'm even learning more about the girls. More than I've ever seen, ever even dreamed of learning. Everything that I thought I knew about them. With each passing day, I'm growing more wrong about everything. As I get up from the bench, the door slowly slides open, shocking me in the process. Oh, Nuri, what are you doing here? It's Natsuki. Jeez, I don't know. She's in the club room by herself. We have to talk to her about what happened yesterday, but I don't think I can do this without you. Without me? Why me? You always know the right things to say. And I think if you're there with me, you'll be more willing to see reason. Don't think that two of us are going to are going up to her again this way will cause her to I know what the consequences are. Sorry. I'm just worried about her. I understand. Let's just treat it as a normal club meeting. If she wants to talk to us, we'll be there. And we'll make that clear, too. Yuri and I walk out of the music room together. Yuri's, like, weirdly, like, randomly abrasive. I don't know what's going on with Yuri in this mod. <laughs> she, is she is very, like, randomly violent. <laughs> Interestingly, Yuri is constantly keeping a hand on her chest, almost as if to monitor her heartbeat. Hey, you're going to be okay. We're her friends, right? You're one of her closest friends too, aren't you? I don't really know for certain. I would like to be, but there are things that she does that make me think otherwise. But the bond we do have at the moment is something I just can't let go. That's why we have to help her, and be there for her. Right. Let's head in, then. Yuri and I walk into the club room, like normal. Hey, Natsuki. You're here kind of early, aren't you? Yeah, that's not a problem, is it? Not at all. Just a surprise is all. I'm sure you also heard about Zero and Sayori being out for tutoring. Yeah, which reminds me... What's the plan for today? Because I kind of just want to read on my own. Uh, well, I was hoping the three of us could have a talk. In the corner of my eye, I see Yuri nervously nod. About what? What is there to talk about? Well, we can't just pretend yesterday's events didn't happen. Monica's right. We have to work this out. We have to... The... Natsuki visibly gets angry again. Wait, this wasn't the plan. Wait, what? <laughs> This is like literally go wait what this is not what you guys talked about what I thought you said you were just gonna go in and have a normal club meeting this is not what what huh this was not the plan why did Yuri nod to this <laughs> did neither of them realize that this wasn't the plan this was not the plan <laughs> like huh I thought the plan was just to have a normal club meeting, just sit there and vibe, and then if she wants to talk, let her talk. This was not the plan. 
Yuri, you messed it up. Yuri didn't mess it up. Monica and Yuri messed it up. <laughs> they both messed it up because Monica just was like, well, we have, we can have a talk. And Yuri's like, yeah. And I'm like, what? No. <laughs> Natsuki visibly gets angry again. I've had enough of this, all right? I'm done. I don't even want to see you right now. You betrayed my trust, and you think I'd be willing to forgive you for that? I'd never do that to you. I just want to know why you're not facing the facts. Your friends aren't real friends. They're the most toxic individuals in this entire school. Because I don't know how to let them go, all right? There's so much you just don't get. You don't understand. I can't be alone again. I can't. I can't. I just can't. Natsuki starts walking backwards and buries her face in her hands. Her breathing is very erratic and now sounds like she's hyperventilating. Yuri immediately rushes over and places her hands on Natsuki's shoulders. Natsuki struggles a bit, but gives in right away. Instead, starts to calm down and control her breathing. You can only watch in disbelief. The way Yuri was able to confront her like that with a hesitation is... admirable. And honestly, sort of overwhelming in a way. Suddenly, Natsuki pushes Yuri away and wipes her tears away. Wayne to sit over there. Where Yuri and I can protest, she walks off to her usual reading spot. She sits down without any book or manga and just lets out a heavy sigh. Yuri and I share concerned glances with one another. Really, what a process what just happened a few seconds ago. Not saying anything, Yuri and I walk towards Natsuki calmly. Natsuki stares off towards the other side of the classroom, not really making eye contact with either of us. Yuri and I sit down nearby and look at her. This isn't how I wanted you guys to see me today. I just wanted to have a normal club meeting. No drama, no stupidity. Just a normal meeting. So much to ask. Ignoring your problems isn't the right move, Natsuki. We weren't supposed to know those problems. Stupid Yuri just <laughs> blurted them out. Don't call her that. You don't mean that. Whatever. I'm sorry, Natsuki. I shouldn't have told anybody about this. It was my mistake and I'm deeply sorry about that. I'm not very good at these things. I want to help my friends, but I don't really know how to go about doing that. I didn't really need your help, though. You believe that yourself? No oh, idea how hard it is for me to admit this. Even if I did, what could you possibly do to get me out of it? These friends aren't perfect, but what friends are? That's a good point. But you're not stupid, Natsuki. I know you aren't. Surely you could see the difference between how we treat you versus them. There's a reason why you come to this club besides reading and writing poems. Isn't there? Well, yeah. But you don't get it. I can't just let them go, no matter how badly they treat me. It's really difficult to let them go because I've already formed a bond with them. Can you stop saying that? Saying what? That I don't get it? It's annoying. <laughs> As if you... I do. I already told you yesterday, Natsuki. You're just like me. Any bond that I make, I end up in an endless cycle of mistrust and fear. The point of pushing them away. But the ones I do make, they mean so much to me. Being alone most of my life, even just one friend makes a whole world of a difference. And for you, you can imagine you only stay with them because they were your first friends for a long time. Would I be wrong in assuming that you can't let go of those bonds because you fear you would end up alone? Natsuki sighs. Oh. Be right. I can't really fathom the idea of leaving my friends behind. I'm scared of ending up alone. He pauses. You both remember when Sayori brought Zero into the club? I nod along with Yuri. Remember how awful I was to him at first? I can't really deserve that. I couldn't help it either. I don't really like change when it comes to friends. Already bonded with, I've already bonded with. Even though none of us were super duper close yet. Plus, it really did seem like he was only here because of us. 
As in, trying to get us all in bed with him or something. It was pretty obvious that he was hanging out with me the most, for a while at least. Here he giggles, I stay silent. Hard time telling if people are being genuine or not. Same here. Guess that's why I've always wanted to become your friend, Natsuki. Despite our differences, you understand each other, even though you try your best to deny that. Yeah, really sorry about that. Struggle with that sort of thing because well, both know already, you both know already that my relationship with my dad isn't the greatest. I only want to push it with those details. There's a part of me that just can't go against him like that. I love him too much. I will say that I know that's part of where this all stems from. I want to get better at it. I just need help. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I'm sure last week proved that. I want to try and be that club president you all met when we first started this club together. And I want to start by helping you get through this. I don't deserve this. He's been so mean to you all. You can't. Natsuki, you're very strong for opening up like this. You made the first step, and it's the most challenging one. There are a lot, there are a lot of people who can't do this on their own. Even I couldn't do it. Sayori and Zero had to help me. Sayori's advice to me was, acknowledging a problem is the first step to solving that problem. Here he gets out of the desk and reaches her hand out. And you've made the first you made that first step all by yourself. Natsuki stares at Yuri's hand in shock for a few moments. <laughs> Sayori can be really smart when she actually puts her mind to something. I guess that's probably why I made Sayori my vice president. I wasn't aware that she was literally coded to be the vice president. At least, not at that point. I made her vice president because I see I saw how much she cared about everyone. Despite everything I've been through, that aspect of her seems to ring true even now. Natsuki takes Yuri's hand and gets up, uh, gets up from the floor. The two share an understanding glance before nodding slightly. Well, I'm glad things all worked themselves out. You did amazing, Natsuki. I'm proud of you. Proud of me? I don't think anyone's ever told me that before. Thank you, I, I think. I'm proud of you both, actually. You both have changed so much since the first time I met you two. Getting the opportunity to see you both grow like this is amazing. I'm glad you both are members of the Literature Club. I'm glad to be a member here too. As am I. Oh, I don't really want this to end. What do you mean? There's more to my story that I think I'm ready to share with you two. As long as you promised you won't let this conversation ever leave this room. He promise. Pinky promise? Natsuki sticks out her pinky, to which Yuri and I take turns wrapping our own around hers. Phew. Okay. Natsuki takes a deep breath and seems to visibly relax. Are going to have to bear with me here? This isn't easy for me. First, I'd like to apologize for lashing out at you these past two days. You're getting rough. You're at school and at home, too. Yuri, remember on Sunday how my dad kept constantly calling and messaging me? Yuri nods. So, tell Sayori this. I told my dad about her suicide attempt a few days ago after it happened. I didn't really know who else to talk to it about it, so I went to him. I'm guessing she's starting I'm guessing he's starting to get worried about me, which is such a weird feeling because Natsuki pauses for a moment. I already know about her father. I have ever since my epiphany struck. I'd planned to make things worse for her. I planned to really ruin her life. Make her undesirable. And now I'm standing here listening to her lament about it all. Has I really been close with him at all? That's besides the point. My dad and I have never really been getting along. We always fight and argue. Never sees things my way, and it gets so frustrating. He's always forcing me to try to be something I'm not. Pauses for a moment. I have really bonded with my dad. Sure, he'll take me out shopping or for ice cream, but it never really helped. Things have been this way for years. So when he suddenly starts worrying about me because of what happened, it's... 
Like he's doing it for his own benefit instead of actually caring. Because where was his worrying whenever I actually needed him? Sorry. Ronsky sniffles and rubs her tears away. I've never really talked about this stuff with anybody before. I guess I really saw it as a big deal. That being said, I've never really been good at expressing my feelings. And I always want to. Or it just never came out right. So has it sounded like a big dummy. I think after everything that's happened, the least I can do is try and talk about how I feel. It's just so hard to confide in people and I think that has something to do with my relationship with my dad. Even hinting at it to my friends leads them to just tell me the same old family is still family even with all those fights. It's just so hard to believe, you know? Parents shouldn't be cheap with groceries to the point where all I have to make for lunch some rice and whatever else is in the fridge that week. Parents shouldn't tell their daughter that they can take care of themselves just because they're in high school. It makes no sense. Parents shouldn't tell their daughter that her emotions are invalid just because they don't feel the same way about it. Father shouldn't tell me that I'm being overdramatic, lazy, weird, and not acting the way a lady should. I wish my dad would just be there for me when I need him. I... I wish my papa didn't let me go through this on my own. Natsuki nearly collapses into Yuri's arms, prompting Yuri to quickly hold her up and keep her from falling. I never realized. I gently rub my cheek and find that it's soaked with my own tears. Natsuki sobs fill the room, leaving Yuri and I completely at a loss for words. I think we both come to a non-verbal agreement that we should allow Natsuki to let everything out. Because, now that I think about it, he's really been through a lot. And I think that's my fault. Kickstarting Sari's depression was my fault, wasn't it? And that's why this reset is happening to me. But I'm here fixing that. At least I hope so. I really do want to help them. Right? Oski picks herself up from Yuri's arms and tries to calm herself down. I'm a big dummy for all of this. Big stubborn idiot. I know that even after all this, I'm not going to change. I'll end up staying the exact same way. That's not true. And if you keep saying that, you'll end up believing it. Yuri's right. If you keep thinking you won't change, then you really won't. Sure, actions speak louder than words. But sometimes words are what allow you to take action in the first place. Start believing in yourself a bit more. Believe you can change for the better. This isn't easy for me. I can't just switch it up from one day to the next. Dad isn't suddenly going to start treating me better. That's here to stay. It doesn't have to be anything drastic. Just small little changes can make a world of a difference. May I make a suggestion? Natsuki wipes away her tears and looks directly at me. Tears glistening under the lights. Start hanging out with us a bit more. In place of your other friends. What? Did you just hear anything I said a few minutes ago? I can't do that! I know, I understand that. You've already kind of been doing that these last two weeks, haven't you? Yeah, I guess I have. There you go, then. You've already made your first steps. There's so much about me that I don't like. Same here. You're not the only one who feels this way, Natsuki. What do you mean? You're, like, basically perfect. Huh? That's not true. You don't really think that, do you? Uh, I'm not going to repeat myself. I'm not perfect. I'm flawed. What human being isn't? I've battled with anxiety for years. I've hated parts of myself for the same amount of time. I still have parts of myself that I really just don't like. So, I think you have the wrong idea about me. Still things I admire about you, Yuri. I never thought I'd ever admit these things to you, but here I am. First of all, your patience with others, and especially me, is insane. Like, despite me being the most stubborn person ever, you still stuck around. Heck, I think I even hated that part about you for a little bit. Because in my mind, I thought that there wouldn't be anybody willing to actually listen to me vent about stupid stuff like online arguments or shitty reviews of my favorite manga. But you were there anyway. Listening away and making me feel like I belonged somewhere. I just hate how you always talk down on yourself sometimes. It's annoying. You're too stupid to see that you're actually a good friend. 
I guess it's just hard for me. But there are things I admire about you, too. Your persistence to keep your friendships together is stellar. The way you took action when Monica and I had our disagreement is something I never would have been able to do. Not on my own. Admittedly, your persistence to stay with those awful friends of yours can be quite aggravating, but admirable nonetheless. The point is, I see things in you that you probably don't see yourself, and I guess the same goes for you. I know we never really got off on the right foot in terms of our friendship, and I know we disagree on plenty of things, but I'm proud to call you my friend. Natsuki smiles lightly. I can't help but realize I've been completely silent during all of this. And I guess Natsuki did consider me to be the middleman in this situation. I'm glad you're my friend too. I'll try my best to improve myself. Only if you promise to do it too. Here he giggles. Of course. I look forward to working on that together. Natsuki suddenly turns and looks towards me. Hey, Monica. Hmm? Huh? I don't think I've ever shown my appreciation for what you've done for me here. Well, for us. You all make me feel safe here. This club, it's become a safe space for me. But everything that's happened these last few weeks, I can't lie and say that they haven't been fun sometimes. You would have some other place to hang out and that doesn't involve my other friends in any sort of way. It feels nice. I was worried things would have been different after Sayori, well... You both already know. You all made this club an amazing place, even with all of its rough patches. So thank you, to the both of you, and to Sayori as well. She's great at making you feel cared for, isn't she? And her hugs are the bet. Er, I mean, they're all right, I guess. Here and I share a small chuckle. Can't forget about Zero either. He can be kind of slow and annoying sometimes, but he has his moments. He's smarter than he gives himself credit for. Don't tell him I said any of that. Last thing we all need is an ego-inflated zero. We all laugh again. Hey! I'm kind of okay with them not being here, though. It made this whole thing just a bit easier to get off my chest. It feels great. Yuri, without warning, walks over to Natsuki and gives her a hug. Natsuki stutters and protests a tiny bit, but doesn't resist. Instead, she slowly hugs back. She's rubbing off on you. <laughs> I guess she is. Seven percent. Uh, see, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's something that she's doing. Anyway, okay, so... Now, <laughs> to debrief my thoughts on that scene. Oh, okay, so... Um... Few things. So I do like. So <laughs> there's a few things that are weird. So why did <laughs> I mentioned it earlier? Why did they were like we're gonna get? We're, we're, why did they like have a plan that they didn't follow through with? Because <laughs> like their plan was to let Natsuki talk when she was ready to talk to them. But like they didn't do anything different this time. They literally did the exact same thing they did last time. Just now Natsuki didn't leave. <laughs> Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, they worded it as if, like, they had a different tactic or, like, a different strategy. And then the strategy they ended up employing was exactly the same. It just worked this time. <laughs> I mean, it worked out in the end, right? I mean, it did. It's just, I don't know. I feel like they should have, I guess, I, I feel like it should have been made apparent that they're obviously using the same strategy again. But also, I feel like, I, like I said, I feel like they should have just said that. Like, if they were going to just do the same thing again and just, you know whittle her down until she finally talks to them then say that because like i said it's a little weird that their original plan was we'll just have a normal club meeting and when she's ready to talk to us she will they didn't do that <laughs> like they just immediately did what they did last time just now it worked <laughs> so it's like i guess that worked out i guess hopefully i guess in the end it worked out if anything, the only difference was Yuri wasn't an asshole. <laughs> Speaking of Yuri, though, one thing I was definitely, like, kind of... One, th one thing that was definitely kind of small was the fact that she, like, mentioned that... She mentioned again where she was like, Natsuki, it's because you're just like me. When you're trying to reassure someone of their problems or trying to make them feel better, you shouldn't, like... <laughs> 
you shouldn't consistently try to compare them to you. Like, unless the, unless they think that, like, I'm weird or something. Like, unless it's something where they're like, I don't know. I think I'm just a weirdo or something. Then you can be like, no, you're not. You're just like me. But, like, Yuri's, like, unwarranted comparison to herself. Because it, it, it almost feels like you're belittling their problems sometimes. When you're like, we are the same. <laughs> Don't worry, you're just like me! It's like, no one wants to hear that. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not! <laughs> it's like, you only really tell them that if they say, like, if they start belittling themselves and saying, like, they're weird or something. Like, <laughs> like just continuously being like, we are the same, Natsuki! You're just like me, for real, for real! <laughs> But uh, overall, though, obviously, the entire thing was pretty nice, though. You know, just those little... Those are my little tidbits I had. Uh, there was another problem I had. <laughs> the other one was... I mean, I don't know. I guess this was never said in canon. I guess it was always... Monica's whole saying she was like she was going to ruin Natsuki's life. Uh, first of all, it did feel kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> like, they kind of ruined the mood of Monica in her head, kind of being like, I was going to ruin this girl. I was going to mess her up. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, Monica, calm down. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, you, did you say this later? <laughs> like, I kind of I kinda, I kinda wish she held that one for later. Like, instead of just, like, in her head being like, oh, I, I, I was going to wreck this girl. <laughs> but also, like, I don't know, it was never... I guess it was never said whether or not Monica was going to mess with Natsuki's, like, with Natsuki's home life. Because it's never stated. But I remember she mentions that messing with Yuri was enough to push Natsuki, to prevent Natsuki from confessing. So she was like, that was good enough for her. So I guess with this, the, nothing of Act 2 actually happened. So this is going more so, I guess, with Monica's notion so this is more so going with Monica's mindset of if Yuri didn't push Natsuki away and she was still desirable, Monica potentially would have messed with her home life. So I guess that's a fair that's a fair assumption to have. Again, all we can really go off of is assumptions because we don't actually know if Monica would have done it or not. It's more of a what do you think type deal. Uh, I think my only other problem was that I felt like the dad confession could have been saved for another like moment maybe or another day because the gag their conversation felt like it was kind of dragging for a bit because like the yuri and natsuki like it, it was weird because it was like the ending part was fine like yuri and natsuki starting to like kind of compliment themselves each other was fine the natsuki talking about her like confessing about her dad kind of felt like it showed up and then it just kind of left because then they immediately went back to her friends like monica immediately went to being like you should hang out with us more and stuff and it was like it kind of made her dad like kind of made like the dad thing feel like it shouldn't have even been like brought up like it felt like that should have been brought up like later <laughs> it's also weird because now sayori just doesn't know <laughs> Like, I understand keeping it a seat if they Natsuki just told, like, one of them. Like, if she just told Monica but didn't tell anyone else, that's fine. But now it's like, now it's just Sayori who doesn't know. <laughs> now it's just weird. <laughs> Sayori's just the only one left out. And I guess MC, but he's still technically kind of new to the club. But yeah, it's like, now it's just Sayori's the only one who doesn't know about this. <laughs> Man, why is Sayori in this match? <laughs> That's what I've been saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Why is she here? <laughs> like, I don't know. It does just feel odd. Because, yeah, it's like, now it's Sayori's just the only one who isn't here. Like, it makes sense to, like, to talk about this stuff with MC leaving. Because, yeah, he's new. He, sure, whatever. She doesn't feel too comfortable. Like, why is Sayori not here? <laughs> But yeah, I feel like they should have saved the dad conversation for something else because it did kind of make the, the 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 scene feel like it was dragging on for a little bit, especially considering the time where the scene thinks it's wrapped up and has like little nice music playing, and then Natsuki's like, "All right, uh, let me tell you about this," and then the music goes away. Like the music lasts for like five lines. <laughs> like it really makes me feel like the dad thing could have been completely omitted <laughs> and just saved for like a future scene. But uh, yeah, um. I guess also just so I don't have to bring this up later. This is a um, I guess because the comparisons are obviously going to be there since this is this version of tackling the side stories. I so before I do right before I before I like criticize the decision, I can see why they're doing it. Obviously, this is more of a dramatic mod, more of a dramatic thing for sure. Obviously, yes. However, I will say 
I kind of like how the side stories handle Natsuki dropping her friends more so than how this is being handled. Because this is definitely making a mountain out of a molehill <laughs> type of situation. Like, because like she's like really sitting here and like really not trying to drop her toxic friends when it's like, Natsuki, this is high school, <laughs> sweetie. You, you, you drop friends all the time. <laughs> it, like, it's definitely like a... <laughs> like, it's not that big of a deal. And especially considering the fact that it's like, you've been hanging out. Like, even Monica pointed it out. It's like, you haven't been hanging out with your friends in I don't know how long. You've been leaving their lunch table multiple times. They really don't seem like they care. <laughs> Like, I don't know, it feels like it's like Natsuki, you can drop them easily. <laughs> like, it definitely feels like it's a little more dramatic than it needs to be about Natsuki dropping her friends. <laughs> like, because the way the side stories handled it was more so just her, like, that's why the way the side story, she just drops them immediately once Yuri confronts her because it's like, yeah, why are you hanging out with them? <laughs> it's like, like, they don't like you, just don't talk to them. Like, it's not that hard to cut a toxic person out, out of your life, especially if they're a high school friend. <laughs> I feel like the mod kind of relies on side story knowledge more than anything. I feel like it isn't trying to rely on it. It's definitely doing its own version of it. It's definitely doing its own version of it, but like I said, it feels like... Yeah, exactly! Thank you, Dragon King, that's my point. It feels weird the friends being the bigger issue than the dad who kicked her out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It feels very odd, because they're definitely making the friends feel like a very big problem. And to me, that doesn't feel right. Because, like, yeah, t cutting out toxic friends isn't that hard. You, especially, like I said, in high school. You're gonna lose some people in high school. That's just how it is. You're in school. So I'm like, dropping toxic people isn't that hard, unless they're like, strictly trying to keep you around. But even in this, they show that her friends don't even give a shit when she leaves the lunch table. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it, c it should be as drip and just, you know, Natsuki, stop hanging out with your friends. Because obviously she is so afraid of being alone because she's not too close with the girls yet. But I feel like they definitely made it a little bit more of a bigger problem than it needs to be. <laughs> Overall, though, I can see why, because, you know, Yuri had her moment, so I felt like Natsuki had to have hers. But, I don't know, I feel like hers could have been her dad, maybe? I don't know. It wasn't all bad. This is obviously me just kind of saying, uh, this was just kind of my take. I can see why, since this mod definitely feels like it's going for a more dramatic type of retelling of DDLC's story, more so than, you know, the side stories was. The side stories were dramatic, but they never felt like they were over dramatic, which I feel like this definitely has a more dramatic theming to it. But, uh, I think I'm gonna go for a little bit just so we can probably hopefully end the day, it seems. Seems like I'm assuming we're getting close to the ending the day, so I'll probably finish this scene at the very least. With these... No, let's be... Let's, with these... At this point, let's just face it. These side characters of Sayori and MC. <laughs> like, at this... Like, they just... They feel like side characters. I always feel like I'm watching the intermission with these two. <laughs> I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that maybe the whole dad thing got shoehorned in because having two dramatic moments would lessen the impact of both, so getting it all out in one go would just avoid that. I guess, but that was my point. I don't think we needed two dramatic moments. I felt like the friends didn't have to be as big of a problem as it needed to be. Like, I feel like the dad thing should have been the bigger issue here. Like, unless the friends actually started doing something negatively to affect Natsuki, but they really don't. Like I said, like, they don't even really care when she leaves them half the time. The Sayori subplot, really, she is at this point. She really is a subplot. <laughs> and, and this isn't like a negative thing, by the way. I'm not saying that be like Sayori being a subplot is like a problem. I'm just saying, it's just that's how it feels. <laughs> so like, let's actually deal with these things. Like, they're freaking everywhere. Did you ever get one? Eh, they're too expensive right now. But I'd like to get one one day, for sure fans over my head and groan. Like, see, like, that's like the start of their plot. Like, what even are these things? Like, what's, what's going on here? Ugh. My brain hurts. You did good today, though. You worked really hard. I mean, yeah. It's nice to get to get stuff done. Doesn't help the headache, though. Sorry, laughs. She pulls out her phone and texts someone. Sorry. You gotta check in on the club. You know how that goes. Right. 
You're always keeping up with that, huh? I have to! It's my duty! Right, nothing wrong with that. You're the vice president, after all. You think things went okay for them today? I hope so. I'm worried about Natsuki. Ah, that makes sense. Well, I have to go get ready and head out for my session. I'll hopefully be able to handle this tomorrow. Don't stress about it too much. I'll try my best. <laughs> right. I'll see you around then, Sayori. Very cheerfully walks towards her house to get ready. I chuckle to myself as I readjust my bag and head home. I guess I'm starting to trust her a little bit more. She seems happier, more carefree, like her old self. The only reference level I have of her old self is years old at this point. What I know a lot about her now is... I reach my front door, unlock it, and head inside. I put my bag on the couch and get ready to, pre to prepare some dinner. I find myself thinking about Sayori's therapy sessions and the effectiveness of those sessions. I've never been one to question the professionals, but I've, I've never found myself in a situation where my friend is relying on them either. Like, is she doing a good job? Are they encouraging her to take her pills regularly, like they prescribed? Is her therapist able to get through to her? Helping her understand her feelings and helping her get better? I don't know. I wish I did know. That way I wouldn't be constantly worried about it. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I am being silly, like she says. Gather up all my ingredients and switch on the stove. Yeah, I don't know. MC in this mod, like, so far at the very least. So far, he just so far he doesn't feel fully like a member of the club right now. He so far he just kind of feels like Sayori's boyfriend, <laughs> which to be fair isn't that big of a problem since there's a lot of mods that kind of treat MC like that, and you know, so it's not that big of a deal. But you know, it's just something where I'm like, yeah, him and Sayori feel like side characters right now. But eh. I mean, I'd only complain if like you know the stuff that we were getting was bad, and I mean. Not like this is specifically supposed to be fully a Sayori mod. Plus, we got like three acts, so Sayori probably gets more focus in the later acts, I would probably presume. Uh, but anyway, uh, that we're gonna stop it right here. You know, is everyone happy about the fact that you may be looking at this and like, wow, Zero, this is a shorter video than usual. But yeah, there wasn't that many times where I actually cut. Like, if you think about it, there wasn't really much interjections from me. I actually was reading for, like, a good majority of this. So we made a lot of progress <laughs> in a short amount of time. Because that was two days. <laughs> so that was two day transitions, I'm pretty sure. I was like, we made a lot of progress in that short amount of time. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. There was a lot of talking. <laughs> but, um... I mean, the main reason why I'm stopping now, though, is because I'm going to be streaming this again, like, literally in two days. Because Friday I'm streaming this because, you know... This doesn't affect YouTube, though. YouTube, don't, 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 don't listen to this. Ah, la, 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 la. Uh, zero ignored chat to grind it out. I kind of did. I got invested. <laughs> bro, I locked in. <laughs> like, I, I locked into the mod, bro. I, I forgot that you guys were there. <laughs> I, I locked in, and I was just reading, and then I was like, oh, shit, right, hello. <laughs> like, bro, I, I locked in. I was in there. But, uh... Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else we're gonna- Alright, I'm just Sayori and MC. You know, they're like side characters. And this isn't because- And I'm not even saying like, oh, because you're talking about because, uh, you're more interested in Monica. But no, it's because Monica's having more interesting plots! <laughs> like, with Natsuki and Yuri and what's going on with that? But yeah, uh... But I am curious to see where this goes now, though. You know, Monica's having- Monica's going on her, uh, redemption. Uh, I'm still thinking that percentage is more so her doing it herself. She's gonna probably... Now, maybe she will eventually, maybe even, like, fully lose her epiphany once she gets, like, far enough. Maybe it'll be officially gone, but, like, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how that really goes, how that really works out. I gotta see if my theory's correct, but we'll never know. But, yeah, so far, though, very good mod. Aside from some of the hiccups that I mentioned a bit earlier, I'm still enjoying myself. I'm still thoroughly enjoying myself with this, so... Yeah, I am curious to see what happens next on this adventure but anyway that is it hope you guys enjoyed if you want to download this for yourself the link is in the description below this has been zero peace